Hi, are you unsure about how to use your individual savings account or ISA tax allowance every year? Or do you know about the common mistakes you could be making while using your tax allowance every year? Then you need to watch this video. In this video, I'm going to provide a summary of what an individual savings account is and why you should be using one. And I'll also be explaining what are the top five mistakes you should avoid while using your ISA. Hello and welcome to The Nimble Nomad. My name is Arjun and this is the channel where we talk about the tips, tricks and hacks to survive and thrive in the UK. In this video, I'm actually going to be talking about the individual savings account or ISA and I'll also be talking about the common mistakes that you probably want to avoid whilst using an ISA. Now, just to be clear, I'm actually not going to be going into, you know, a whole bunch of different types of ISAs that are available. There's a ton of videos about this available on YouTube. What I'll do is I'll link a video in the description below, which was produced by my friend Neil. Um, and it's really, really well explained. What are the different types of ISAs? What is an ISA? You know, how do you actually use it? Um, in, in that video. But in this video, I'm actually talking about what are the mistakes that you can actually make while using an ISA. So basically, I've been using an ISA for forever uh, and I actually hadn't known uh, the specifics and benefits of what a individual savings account is until recently when I actually started using a stocks and shares ISA. So now the stocks and shares ISA is wonderful and I've been maximizing this but there are some common themed mistakes that you can actually make while uh, using a different combination of ISAs and I'm gonna be actually walking through a lot of these in this video. Okay, so let's get into the basic concept of what an individual savings account is and why is it helpful. So individual savings accounts or ISAs as they're more commonly known are tax efficient wrappers or instruments which you can use for saving money as well as investing money in the UK. You get different types of ISAs. Um, you can save money in the form of pure cash or you can use that cash to invest into stocks, shares, you know, exchange traded funds, uh, different commodities and so on and so forth in the UK. For the tax year 2020, uh, 2021, uh, the allowance uh, that you have for using an ISA is 20,000 pounds per person for the whole year, which means basically if you're an individual, you can save up to 20,000 pounds into a combination of different types of ISAs in the UK. Now the tax year runs from 6th April uh, 2020 till 5th April 2021, which means that after this period, the tax year will, there'll be a new tax year and the allowance will renew. So the 20,000 allowance that you have will refresh and then you can save another 20,000 pounds. So this is actually huge uh, in my own personal opinion. And I actually don't know of any other country where the tax-free allowance for investments and savings is so generous. The actual main benefit of having money saved or invested in an ISA is that you actually don't pay any income tax on, on the investments or savings that you make through these accounts. So let's say hypothetically you invested money in through an ISA and the ISA was generating an income uh, through it, so, uh, you know, through dividends or through growth of specific stocks or funds, then any capital gains or dividends that you receive through the ISA are actually tax-free. So over a period of long-term investing, you could actually end up with a nice little pot of money and that pot of money, if it was generating a reasonable income for you, would be completely tax-free. Percy, in my opinion, uh, this is actually really huge because uh, the 20,000 pound allowance is massive and it allows you to invest and save money. And also over a long period of time, as you start generating income from these investments, they are completely tax sheltered and tax free. Okay, so with that in mind, let's actually get into some of the common mistakes that people make with 
uh, using a ISA or investing money through an ISA. Okay, so as I said, this video is not about the different types of ISAs. I have a link of a video in the description below which really clearly explains what are the different types of ISAs and what are the various options available to you. So if you guys are interested in understanding the breakdown of an ISA, then I would really recommend and urge you to go and watch that video. But in this video, in the next section, basically I'm now going to be talking about some of the common mistakes that people make whilst using an ISA and how you can avoid them. Okay, so let's get into it. So question number one, do I only get 20,000 pounds per year? as a tax allowance for using in my ISA? Answer to this question is yes and no. So ISA allowances actually have grown tremendously. They used to actually be at one point only about nine or 10,000 pounds a year per person. But now in the year 2020, 2021, uh, as an adult, you have an allowance of 20,000 pounds per person available to you. Now, um, basically, if you are a family or a couple, then basically the available allowance to you from an ISA perspective is 20,000 pounds per person. So if you're a couple, then that allowance goes up to 40,000 pounds as a, as a joint couple. Or if you're a family actually, and you had children as well, then you're eligible to open an ISA for children as well. And there's something called as a junior ISA. So um, as a, if it was a family of four, then the total allowance actually would be 58,000 pounds per year because the junior ISAs are, there's a maximum limit of 9,000 pounds for children for each year that you can contribute. So 20 plus 20, that's 40,000 for the two adults and two children, that's 18,000 pounds. So you're going up to 58,000 pounds per year on the allowance for a full family. Now, a lot of people just assume that they have 20,000 pounds and they actually end up using just that, but they fail to actually maximize the saving and investment potential that they have available to them each year by utilizing all of these um, various opportunities and allowances that they actually have. Now, the top tip and trick here is that uh, children after they uh, turn 16, uh, you can actually contribute up to 20,000 pounds into their ISA. And um, in, this is their junior ISA. And once they actually turn 18, they'll actually no longer be eligible. So the last two years of them being classified as minors, you actually have 40,000 pounds of an additional allowance available to you if you wanna save money for their you know, college or whatever it is that they need in the future. Personally, my wife and I actually are really big savers and we always try and live well below our income uh, and we try and save as much as possible. So, you know, I know 40,000 pounds is a lot, um, but we try and maximize the use of our allowances by, uh, you know, both of us ensuring that any money that we're saving, we're putting it into our ISAs rather than normal, you know, everyday saver accounts or standard savings accounts, which are not tax sheltered. The primary reason why we do that is because any income in the future that we generate through these accounts, even if we're not hitting the full 20,000 pound allowance each year, will always be tax free. So if I'm making any dividends uh, in uh, earnings through these accounts, or if I'm earning any interest through the savings that I've made through these accounts, these are all tax protected. So I'm actually really, really safe and I don't have to deal with the tax man because I've invested in these accounts. So question number two is, can I pay into more than one uh, ISA? And can I pay into the same type of ISA in two different provider accounts? So yes, you can actually pay into more than one type of ISA. So you have different types of ISAs, which is again, you know, explained in the video I talked about earlier. Um, and so if you had a cash ISA and a shares in stock ISA, yes, you could pay into uh, those in the same tax year. But if you had two different shares in stocks ISAs with different providers, you would not be able to pay into the, both of those within the same tax year. So you can only choose one shares and stocks ISA per tax year to contribute towards and invest through that. 
uh, and you can't do it through multiple providers. Now, if you accidentally end up paying into more than one shares and stocks ISA within the same year, then the, the understanding is that you have to contact the HMRC and they actually have a process whereby they can resolve this for you. Now, personally speaking, I've actually done this this tax year and I only realized this while doing research for this particular video last night. So I actually have to call up the HMRC on Monday and try and figure out what I need to do in order to resolve this problem. Of course, I don't want to go foul or breach uh, any tax rules. So what I'll do is as soon as I have the information, I'll post it in the comment section below so that everybody who's watching this video has that information to hand as well. And you can avoid doing this going forward. Um, in my opinion, this is a really, really easy mistake to make because if, for example, you had a, a particular shares and stock ISA and you open a new one in the new tax year and you weren't happy with the first one, it's very easy to almost switch over and realize that, you know, without realizing you can end up paying into two shares and stocks ISA. In my case, you know, that ex that's exactly what happened. I wasn't happy with my first shares and stocks ISA, so I started using another one and I hadn't realized that this rule actually existed. So I'll keep you updated as soon as I have more information about this. So question number three is, should I use a cash ISA or should I use a stocks and shares ISA to invest money and save money in it? So the amount of dividend income that you could get tax-free back in 2018 was up to 5,000 pounds. Now, after 2018, what the government did was they slashed this allowance from 5,000 pounds all the way down to 2,000 pounds, which means that anything you earn through in, in dividends within a tax year over 2,000 pounds is actually liable for tax if it is invested through an account which is not an ISA. So I'm gonna actually break down the different types of taxes that you will actually have to pay if you are investing in a non-ISA account. So let's look at the different taxes that are available. Uh, so if you invest in a standard account, which is not uh, an ISA, and you were a basic rate payer, then you would actually be paying 7.5% on the dividends. A higher rate would be 32.5% and the additional rates, so if you're in like the top, top bracket, then you'll be paying about 38.1% on any dividends that you earn on non-ISA account uh, investments. So let's assume, right? So if you had um, 5,000 pounds of dividends that you were earning in a year, in hypothetical, uh, then your basic rate uh, that you would be paying tax on is about 225 pounds that year on 5,000 pounds. A higher rate, you'd end up paying 975 pounds. And then on additional rate, you'd be paying 1,143 pounds because you're basically almost wiping out half of your um, dividends through this. Now, let's assume you have a 100,000 pound investment pot that you've got and that's yielding a 4% yield every year. So which means, you're getting about 4,000 pounds a year in dividends, right? Now, if this money were invested in a non-ISA account, you would be basically paying about 150 pounds as a, as a basic rate payer on tax, 650 pounds uh, on uh, in, in tax on, on as a higher rate uh, investor, and additional rate, you'd be paying about 762 pounds. Now, all of this money is payable on the delta of 2,000 pounds. So you remember that you have a 2,000 pound allowance and anything over that 2,000 pounds, so in this case, the remaining 2,000 pounds, you're saving this money by not paying, by paying the money or investing it through a ISA. So just keep this in mind. It's really, really important. A lot of people are actually sitting there thinking, well, Arjun, who the heck is gonna earn, you know, anything over 2,000 pounds in dividends you know last time i invested and I, I the dividend i got was you know five pounds but don't forget that if you choose to reinvest your dividends then the amount or the the pot of money that you're actually saving and that's invested starts to grow and don't underestimate the power of compounding 
Compounding is basically when you basically take uh, the dividends that you're getting each year and you reinvest them into the same stock if you believe or the same fund that you've got invested to the shares and stocks ISA and over a period of 15 to 30 years this is not a get rich quick scheme over sustained long term growth you know your investment is actually going to start producing significant amount of money uh, and it's not hard it's really not hard if you're just putting in regularly sizable chunks of money into these investment pots over a long period of time you're actually going to be making some decent amount of money through these investments what is bed and ISA or bed and spouse in terms of ISAs and investments? This is actually a strange name, but it's actually a very useful uh, and efficient tax planning strategy. What this basically means is that in the UK, you have a capital gains tax allowance of £11,700. So if you invested something in today and tomorrow that investment grew, you wouldn't actually have to pay any tax on the first 11,700 pounds of that investment. So if you withdraw that, you're actually protected for 11,700 pounds. Now the bed and ISA concept basically is, let's assume you decided you weren't aware of what an ISA is and what the benefits of it are, and you actually invested in a standard investment account, right? So this was not tax protected. What you could do is, sell the investments if they're at profit, uh, extract 11,700 pounds worth of funds from your standard investment account and deposit them into your ISA, provided you've obviously got, still got a massive uh, allowance available. So you've still got the full uh, tax allowance available for that year, which is 20,000. Uh, and you would basically be fully tax protected going forward in the future. So anything going forward, if you earn through uh, the investments, so dividends, capital gains, whatever it is, you don't have to pay any future tax on it. And you don't actually have to pay any tax at the point of extraction as well, because you're within the of the capital gains tax as well. So the concept of spouse and is that what you can do is also is you can transfer the similar amount so 11,700 pounds to your spouse in her name and she can then deposit that amount into he or she can deposit that amount of money into their ISA so similar concept so let's say you had 23,400 you took 11,700 sold it invested it into your account the remaining 11,700 what you can do is transfer it to your spouse and they can deposit it into their ISA. So you're almost like saving yourself paying any taxes, but you're being really, really tax efficient by doing this. So it's a great way of being efficient and planning stuff. So obviously I don't uh, invest in standard investment accounts. Everything that I invest in is through the ISA. It's nicely tax sheltered and protected. But if you've made any investments through a normal investment account and are very worried about paying capital gains tax and this is a really great um, tax efficient planning mechanism going forward so that's it guys uh, that's all i wanted to talk about in this particular video um, i'd love to hear some more thoughts from you guys whether you've made any of the mistakes that i've talked about in this video or if any of the questions that i've talked about in this video have helped you out if you have any other questions that I've not covered in this video, please uh, comment in the section below. Uh, and don't forget to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. It really, really helps out this channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.